guys, I'm back again like I never left. Welcome to Chit Chat with MC Charlene. My name is MC Charlene, aka the Energy Goddess. You know, welcome back, guys. Listen, today we have a top. Listen, today we have an awesome person. Okay, he is humble, kind, talented, and he has been in the game for. 20 years okay almost 20 years listen this guy is legendary his name is admiral pear born in zambia raised in norway <laughs> like i always say born in cameroon raised in norway we have another fellow african he's what he looks white but he is black <laughs> listen guys admiral pear he's so talented he he literally listen I was arguing with somebody about this. This guy brought reggae and dance hall to Norway and then spread it to Scandinavia. That's facts. That's facts. And he has been going at it, giving hits after hits after hits. And I'm just so excited to talk to him. And I, want I hope everybody's having a great day today. We're about to have a, a great interview with a legend. Okay. He's been in the game for so long. He is a legend. That's all you can call him a legend. And when his music is lit. Okay, and the crazy thing is the reggae is in Norwegian, but every time it comes on, you have to move. You don't have any choice because he only makes hits. And after this, you guys know what we do. You follow the artists and you go stream their songs, their music. Stream, 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 because we in this channel is all about supporting, supporting, supporting. Okay, we are here to inspire people and support. So let's get the show started. Let me bring in Admiral Pear right now. Let me see. Blessings. Ah. Blessings, Mama. Blessings. Ah. Greetings, greetings. Ah. <laughs> How are we doing? How are we doing? Admiral Pear in the building. What's up, my sister? What's up, my sister? Let me just turn it up a little bit. Here. <laughs> How are you doing, Mama? I am great, thank you. How are you? I'm good. Looking fabulous as ever. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so listen, nice welcome to Chit Chat with MC Charlie. Thank you so much. Thank you for all the kind words you, you did in your intro that I was watching. I was like, I don't deserve that, man. <laughs> you do, you do, you do. That's why I said you're so humble, you're so kind. I don't even know you. I don't even think you understand how how great you are. I don't think you understand Respect. that. Like, you know, people need to give props when props is, you know. You know, you need, I mean, you, you've been doing so much and you're, you're spreading the culture. We like people who spread the culture. You know what I mean? We do try. You know, we do try. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're good. So, huh? You're good? I am very good. I hope you're good. Too. And I just, uh, before we start, I just have to commend the work that you do. I always, I always uh, watch the chit chat with uh, Charlene, and you got a lot of amazing artists on your platform. And uh, keep spreading the music and keep spreading the vibes. I love it. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's all for the culture. It's all for the culture. That's what's so, up. I have to say thank you for coming. You know, I've been texting you like you gotta come to my show. The people are gonna love you. You gotta come. You know, because you, you yeah, know yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a new platform, this live thing, I guess. We can't do interviews live and direct, so we get, we better just do it on the internet, you know? Exactly, you know? Yeah. Nothing mm. can stop us, you know, from spreading the music and the love, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let me just start. For those of you coming in, my name is MC Charlene, a.k.a. The Energy Goddess. Listen, I have lived in Norway for over almost 21 years. I am born in Cameroon and I'm raised in Norway, a rule in Bargan. So I, <laughs> let me just put that out there. And then I host shows, events all over the, the, you know, the world. I travel, I host shows in Sweden. I don't do many shows in Norway and that's because we're going to talk about that. <laughs> but, you know, it's all, I host shows, I'm the energy goddess, I hype, I, I introduce artists, I, I just, I hype. When you need a good host and a good MC, I'm the one to call, you know what I'm saying? Yes. That's what's up, that's what's up. <laughs> energy goddess with the energy squad. Yes, the energy squad is the fan base, they love me, I love them, and we're doing good. <laughs> that's what's up, so, that's what's up. Back to you, back to you, back to you. Admiral, thank you for being here. Let's just start with, listen. When I posted this interview, people were like, Zambia? Zambia? I 
was like, yes, Zambia. What do you mean? This is from Zambia. The guy is white. I said, mm -mm. he's from Zambia, and you're going to get to know about that. So tell me, where are you from? <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, born and raised in Zambia with a Zambian mother and a Norwegian father. Mm -hmm. So I I lived uh, in Zambia for 13 years of my life, and then. Um, after that, we moved to Norway, and um, it was kind of like a culture clash because we had to start everything, everything from scratch and everything from the beginning. So the language and everything, the whole mm -hmm. culture, yeah. had to learn about that, and um, yeah, going to school and and learn the language and, and and learn the vibes of Norway. What what Norway has to offer, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. So you left you left Gam uh, Zambia when you were like 13 years old. That's right. And then you moved to Norway because your 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 father was sick. Yeah, yeah, that's right. My 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 dad he was um he didn't have a, a lot of time left, and he figured that the best idea for us to get a better life and a better education and things would be would be to move to Norway. Mm -hmm. so, so that's what we do. Well, that's what we did at that time. We 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 moved to Norway. Yeah. Yeah, and he eventually passed. My sorry, I'm sorry for that. You know. Yeah. And, thank you, yeah, thank you. And I also learned that you lost your mother. I'm so sorry for that. May their souls rest in peace. Thank you, you so know. much. Thank you so much. Yeah, such is life, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nobody's going to live forever. <laughs> exactly, I know. But I, I hope they live a great life. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So let's talk about Zambia first. So living in Zambia, I mean, were there a lot of white kids around? Um, yeah, there, there, there are a lot of white people in, in, in Zambia. Um, I went to a school, a private, uh, not a private school. It was, a it was a public school. So I was like, uh, maybe there were two white children in this, in, in the school, <laughs> me and the next guy. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. um, but I mean, I, I, it didn't bother me really mm -hmm. that I was, I was different. It, it was, um, it was basically... I had a, I had the child childhood of um, it was a dream basically. I mean, yeah. it, it, I, I didn't look at myself like I was different from any of the other kids or anything. Though I used to hear it a lot mm -hmm. and things, like that, but I didn't look at myself different in any way. Yeah, but you you still you know it's normal because you look different even here. You know, yeah. usually yeah. you travel to some place that you people are not used to. Uh, you're different. It's normal. But uh, the good thing is that you could handle it well, right? It wasn't yeah. like you know you were the underdog. I mean, you fought. You were like, don't play with no, me. No, 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 no. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have any of that. Yeah. I mean, I spoke the language. Uh, I used to play football in the ghettos, and everybody knew me in in the area I grew up. So it it wasn't a problem for me. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I I think that's great. And then, let's talk about the food. You know, I love food. I love food. Yeah. I, I'm also a certified chef. You know, before I became an MC, you know, I was working as a chef. Yeah. I love food. So let's talk about the food. Like you, Zambian food. How is it? How is it? Do you do you see Zambian food? The main the, the main dish is uh, in Shima, which is like uh, ugali in Kenya. Mm -hmm. It's very similar to fufu. I think fufu is made of cassava, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, but this one is made from from maize meal, and that's like the that's like the national dish or the 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 food that that people eat uh, in Zambia. Yeah. So yeah, we love that man. Some village yeah. chicken. Hey, hey, yo. Hey, let's go to the food, yo. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, yeah. you to Norway and I'm sure it must have been a terrible feeling to leave everything behind. How did you feel as a kid moving to Norway? I mean, it, it was difficult at the time because not only were we moving to a place that we didn't know nothing about, but uh, my father was also ill as well. And I mean, um, that uh, really had a psychological effect on a youth, especially in, in, in the age of 13 and, and going through going through these adolescents, you know, so it, it was a really difficult time for us and a new culture. My mom, my mother, who is Zambian, she didn't know anything about the culture or she didn't know anything about Norway. So it's like the process was difficult because we had to learn, learn it together. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it was, yeah, it was a, it was a difficult chapter in my life at that time, you know? Yeah, I understand. And, and, and yeah, I understand it must have been rough. And then now you coming to Norway, you had to start to learn the language. 
Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. So you had to start to learn the language and then, you know, what is on that? Ni no rige kurs. Yeah, no kurs. You know how it is. Language, of course, yeah. Yeah, to, to, to learn, um, learn Norwegian and at the same time, you always get, get to hear like, how, how can you, how can you be from Zambia and you're white and all these things, all these questions, yeah. you know? Yeah. And yeah. A, a fun fact, I don't want to go too fast in the, in the, in the story, but uh, I met my wife at uh, the Norwegian course learning the language, you know? Yeah. Wow. That is, wow. You <laughs> got to be together a long time then. Wow. And um, like we're in class and everybody's, everybody's uh, explaining like um, where they're from, how long they've been in the country and things like that. And then it was my time. I was like, yeah, I'm from Zambia. I've been here so, so long. And then my wife goes, yeah, she goes, she's from Kenya, you know. She, she's like, uh, how can you be from Zambia if, and you're white, you know. That's the first <laughs> thing I heard from her mouth. It's like, <laughs> yo. <laughs> <laughs> And you yeah. just felt, you just felt like, yeah, but I am from Zambia. Leave me alone. Wow, like this one here, this one, <laughs> this one. Madame Palama, we'll call that one. Look I tell you, one. spicy little one, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so now you're in Norway. Uh, did you feel accepted in the beginning or was it also hard to, to you know, I, I, can, I can imagine that it was hard to, you know, blend in, even though you're white, but you still mm. have a different background, a different culture. How did mm. you feel? You know. um, it took some time to adapt to to how things um, how things were here generally, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, I must say, I I, I was there, there came a time where I, I I just didn't give a fuck. I became like a rebel rebel youth, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't give a damn what people said about me or what they thought about me or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, 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 yeah, I became a naughty 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 youth. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I can understand. I can listen, but and I'm sure you started hanging with those, you know, your African people, mm, mm. and they influenced you. Yeah, I mean, you uh, oh, you influenced them. I was saying. Yeah, we influenced each other. I think you know, yeah. shit, man. Yeah, those are the days, man. Um, yeah, and that that's where like um, music started coming into my life yeah. around that, around that time, you know. Because mm -hmm. uh, they've got these uh, clubs for the youths. So you, you know these Ungdoms club. Yeah, got... yeah, yeah, yeah. And at uh, these youth clubs, they had, uh, they had studios, they had DJ equipment, they had all these kind of things. And I was wondering why these youths are not taking advantage of it, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, what I, that's what I noticed uh, at once. And I said, no, I have, to, I have to do something. So that's where music really started in, in Norway, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah, and then then we come to the reggae part. Like, what made you want to do music and then do reggae and dance all? Yeah, um, basically, my mom used to listen to a lot of reggae when we were when we were young. She had a big uh, record uh, collection, mm -hmm. and uh, we used to listen to a lot of, uh, of reggae music since I was young. When I was ten years old, actually, I managed to go to Shabaranks' concert. When he was in uh, South Zambia, yeah, and I remember I was almost I was scared <laughs> because there were so many people and it was crazy. <laughs> That's all I remember. But uh, I remember the vibe that Shaba brought on stage, and we're talking um, we're talking like '92, so like people were everybody was um, wanted to be like Shaba Ranks, wanted to sound like Shaba Ranks because he was a star those days. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he was a big man those days. So, so it, it started early. I mean, we've always loved music. We always used to rap to each other and sing to each other. Well, not much singing. It was mostly rapping. And then now you started a band, which uh, you started a group. Yeah, mm -hmm. we started a, so, we started a sound system um, called Jaak Manifest, yeah. where me and uh, a few other brothers, Daniel Lyon and Chati. We started um, playing reggae music, and I was the MC. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. so and we used to travel around. We used to travel around anywhere where we could play. We would, uh, we would, uh, we would do it, you know. And um, yeah, it, it, it was a passion that really drove us. Um, really drove us, and uh, it was something that we loved, you know. Mm -hmm. And then you started so we, doing 
music alone and and then you came Sorry? up with your first mixtape and then you started alone you started doing yeah music. yeah 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 and then through the emceeing in clubs and and uh, around the place i i i started i decided to do my first mixtape mm -hmm. and um yeah that was like 2000 and 2008 yeah 7 8 somewhere there yeah and um yeah it was um i managed to get a, a lot of people on on it uh, collaborations and uh, yeah that was a, that was the first mixtape and that's where it started Mm -hmm. And how did you feel? You just you started doing reggae, and now you came out with your mixtape, and then you had. I mean, you're in a country where, let's be honest, Norwegians are not that very welcoming when it comes to trying new stuff. If it's not pasta from Italy, or you know, yeah, a little bit of yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's difficult to like. What's that? I'm sure they were probably like, "Who's this guy? What is he saying? What is he doing?" I yeah, people, it. people were wondering, you know. But um, at that time, at that time, we were very militant, militant, and we didn't give a damn what people said about us or thought about us, you know. Mm -hmm. It was like, uh, yeah, we were just doing our thing, and that's where, when I did the first mixtape, that's when I went from uh, singing in English or rapping in English mm -hmm. to try and do something Norwegian, so the Norwegian people could. Uh, actually yeah understand what i was talking about and what i was what i was singing about mm -hmm. and then now you came up with that uh, your hit single mm. and got nominated yeah. how was that how was that how was the feeling i mean these things they 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 happened uh, gradually you know um that was like three years I think, later i guess yeah 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 something like that um and um like the song just just the producer who recorded me, Carl Hovind, he, he told me that uh, this is a this is a hit, you know, and um, the time that I really understood, the, yeah, 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 the time I really understood how how big this song was is when the Prince of Norway actually said that he listens to Admiral P, you know, and uh, I was like, yo, I'm 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 in the house, I'm in the bloody. When King's the prince listened to me, you have arrived. You have arrived. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah so that was crazy, man. That was crazy. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, I mean, that song, that song is still good. Listen, till today, yeah. if you play that song, people stand mm. up and sing. I mean, that song man. is a hit for for a lifetime. I appreciate it, man. Do I appreciate you know it. Do you actually know that? Uh. I tend to forget about it sometimes, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's it's a good it's it's a good memory. It's a good memory that uh, that the people love the music so much, you know. Yeah, and then, and then later on, you came with another song. Was it the yeah. Angel? Was, was it? Was um, it yeah. Song? After that, it was uh, yeah. Angel and Cullinan were yeah, on Kalenam, the same. Yeah. 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 I mean, most of the songs you touch. This is, this is the thing about this is the thing about you. I, I think it intentionally, but you do. You're like a motivational speaker in your songs. You, you do, yeah, I mean, we we really try to do, to be positive in our music and uh, try to uplift and uh, mm -hmm. give a positive message uh, through the music. You know, I think mm -hmm. it's our duty to do to do yeah. such things. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, that's what reggae represents, actually. You know, yeah. most of the reggae songs have a meaning to it. You know, and 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 you can take inspirations from it. And every mm. song that you write has a meaning to it. Yeah, I, we try. I mean, there there is some slackness. We got I some know, dancing I mean, I mean, that, yeah. that are bad, but uh, dirty, we try but still, you know <laughs> to inspire people. And uh, yeah, that, yeah, we do try, man. Yeah, you're doing that. You know, sometimes when you listen to your songs, like it's either you're motivating somebody to, you know, keep fighting, stay strong, don't mm. give up, or you're mm. like, you know, turn up, you know, life is too short. Yeah. Oh, yay. Yeah, you know, yeah. There's always something good coming out from your songs, and I think that not everybody can achieve that. You know, not everybody mm. do that. Yeah. So tell me, do you write your own songs? I write my own songs. I write my own songs. Um. I have always always done it i've i've tried actually this summer mm -hmm. to get somebody to help me but it's like we've we've done it together 
but I, I would I wouldn't feel comfortable singing somebody else's songs. Uh, I, would, I would like to have a part in in my say or yeah, a part of it. Yeah, I get that. I I understand that because you know it's hard to let that control go. Hmm. Yeah, especially when when you're so determined and uh, I mean you have a message to put out there and you have your own vibe to put out there and uh, yeah, people mm -hmm. have to people have to know that it's been working so far. So why change it? So. Mm -hmm. so you have like you have like how many awards do you have like two or three? Um. Yeah, I've been nominated three times for you the Norwegian yeah. Grammys, but mm -hmm. uh, I won the one the one time for Engi. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I remember. Yeah. Bring me, bring me, bring me the, the awards there, bro. I'm talking to my son. Is <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah, and I actually won a won an MTV award um, as well as yeah. uh, No No Way's Best Act. So that was exactly. that was good. Hurry up, Norma. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up, big boy. Yeah, hi. This is the uh, Norwegian Grammy. And then this one, people know. Everybody knows that. Whoa, <laughs> no. what I'm talking about. If you ain't got one of those, you gotta work harder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So that's what's up. No, we're grateful. We're grateful that the people love the music and uh, love the vibes that we that we bring. You know. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and your and, and and your music is still living. Oh, your music. Is... Listen, your your listen. I am this person. I love music, of course. You know, I'm an MC. So when I when I listen to good music, it doesn't matter where I am. I'll bust the move right there. You know? Yeah, that's what's up. That's what's up. <laughs> There's many times I've said in the bus stop and people look at me like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> Don't mind them, my sister. Don't mind them. Don't mind them. <laughs> always been like that i can't have it moving move, music moves in my body and most of the time when i'm listening to your songs i'm, I'm like hey mm. you know i'm, I'm bombing you know, i love dance songs <laughs> yeah 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 no that's nice man that's nice to hear so let's talk about it like now you you know you're in norway you're doing reggae um have you felt like uh, you know? Of course, it's logical that you. It has not always been accepted. You know, there's always somebody there who's skeptical. There's always a lot of people who are like, "Who's this man?" Have you felt hate from the the public? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Especially in this time that we're living in with the with the internet, you know. Mm -hmm. There's always. Uh, I don't. I don't check the comments and things that much, but uh, there's always some hate in the comments and like, who does this guy think he is? He thinks he's black, he's, he, he, you know? But it's mostly ignorant people and yeah, people who, who don't know nothing about me that um, that turn to the, these kind of uh, these kind of comments, you know? Mm -hmm. And how do you deal with that? I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best No, I, I, really, I mean... It doesn't change the price of rice in China, you know. <laughs> exactly. Whatever they, whatever they, whatever they think about me, I don't, I don't really, I don't really give a damn what they think about me. It doesn't, it doesn't affect me at all. Wow, but sometimes it can a bit. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, bye. <laughs> yeah, man. If I have a piece of cognac, let me sit on the chair and mind my yeah, business. Yeah, you see. <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. So, I've always felt like, you know. Like I said, I don't. I host shows here, but they are not as big as the ones I host when I travel to, you know, mm. UK. You know, no, you know I saw that one country. show that you did. Sorry, sorry. I saw that one show that you did with, um, yo. There was a massive crowd there, and you killed it, man. <laughs> Where was that? Was it in Amsterdam? I think it was Amsterdam. Yeah, it was outside in a tent, in a tent, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was really, that was amazing to I said, there goes my system, man. That's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. You know, the thing is that I feed off the crowd. Like, when I go, mm. when I step there, I have massive energy, and then I, I give it to you, and then I, I combine it with mine, and I explode. You know? I know, and I know. And That's what's up. And it's just all about having fun. It's just all about making sure everybody has the best experience when they leave from mm. that concert. You know, True. and, and True. I've always wanted to, you know, I've always wanted to 
you know, brand myself more in Norway. Of course, I've done the little events, but I want to be on the big festivals in Norway. But mm. I've always felt like Norway, they're not that inclusive, you know? And yeah. I've mm. always, even I've lived here for so many years. I am, I am, I, I, yeah. So a lot of people say you're so Norwegian. I'm like, yes, I don't care. Mm. I live, this is my country. I live here. I love Norway, and I love mm. Cameroon too. But I'm exactly. always kind of like, when I look at the TV, I don't see anybody representing, you know, where mm. I'm from, my culture. Mm. I don't see Afrobeat playing on the, 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 the TV. I don't see, I don't hear Afrobeat in the radios. I don't, I don't, I don't so, you know, after a while, you start pulling back a bit because you start going to the people who mm. accept you and, you mm. know, are for the culture. Yeah. So I've always felt that. And, and, and I don't know if you have felt that too, because I know you've, you've, you've managed to like, you know, let your voice be, be heard. You've managed to, you know, step out of your comfort zone and just showed everybody what you, what you have, you know, and people mm. have accepted it, but it took you years, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, I mean, things don't happen overnight, you know? A good friend of mine, Bongo, he says that whatever you do, it takes 10 years, you know? Yeah. Whatever you do to really make it, it takes mm -hmm. 10 years. And I thought about it, and uh, he was actually right, you know? Because, mm -hmm. um, I mean, you you, you got to be determined, you got to be stubborn, you got to be, and not give give a damn about what people say, basically, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. to, to break through and when... You know, when you see somebody that, that doesn't give a damn what other people says and he's doing his thing or she's doing a thing, mm -hmm. you respect that, you know? You, you, yeah. I mean, you're like, hey, this person is really putting in 100 in, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. uh, I mean, that, yeah. It's, 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 a lot of people are like, why don't you make your own concert? Why don't you make your own show? I'm like, I, when you want to do that, you have to have sponsors, and you know? Mm. And then it comes, True. you know, I, I, I don't like to say this, but it is the truth. It has a too lot, a lot to do with, if, let me say, honestly speaking, I know, let's, not, let's, let's, not, I don't want to get you uncomfortable on anything, but no. I know that if I was Norwegian, I mean, mm. if my skin color was, mm. I've always felt that way. If my mm. skin color was white, mm. okay, yeah, and then, People saw, because I know people are watching. I know people are watching. Mm. And the, those big people saw that, whoa, here's a Norwegian girl, like, doing all this stuff out of Norway. Like, whoa, we, we got to get to know her. We have to get her on our festival. We have to check her out. Trust True. me. I will be on this stage, that stage, that stage, that stage. But True. because my skin color is mm. different, mm. people turn out to engage them or they turn out to no, show the same support yeah yeah that's 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 funny because I, i've actually thought about it as well like um the reason basically the people love me and love to hate me is because my norwegian isn't as perfect as a norwegian person you know mm -hmm. so i wonder to myself like if i was not white would i be as as a big artist as i actually am, you know, exactly. and I doubt it, I doubt it, mm -hmm. to, yeah. to tell the truth, I don't think I would be as big as I am if I was not white. Uh -huh. And, 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 and that is, it's sad, but it is the reality. So, yes. and, and of course, people like me, a black and beautiful girl like me, still yes. have to work yes. harder, I still have mm. to work harder, and I don't mind working harder, that's why you see, I get bookings all over. I get bookings mm. more in Sweden than in Norway. I get bookings in Finland than in Norway. You see? You know? You see? And I don't, I, I'm like, they'll come around, you know? Mm. They'll come around. But at the same mm. time, I wish it wasn't like that. You know? What yeah, I mean? me too. Me too. It's, it's, it's a, yeah. I, it angers me actually that it's like that. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. it's, uh, so, so what what have what have have you done anything? Have you said have you spoken about it? Is there is there a platform where you know you, we can talk about stuff like this? Hmm. No, it, I mean it's it's it it should be heard. You know, I mean it's it's very important because um, I guess all as well it's the cultural different differences and I don't want to defend 
defend that, but uh, it's like um, people are scared of the unknown. That's what I've noticed. I understand. I understand. I understand. Yeah. I understand. And um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's I guess people need to be spoon fed with this thing, and <laughs> basically, you know. Yeah, you know. Like I was talking to one of my colleagues because I'm also a social worker, and I was talking mm -hmm. to my colleague like, yeah, it, 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 I, like you know, I don't tell everybody what I do. I don't tell everybody what I do because I like to be the the regular social worker, Susu Newman, Charlene. I like to be yeah. there, you know. So yeah. I don't tell everybody what I do. But I was talking to one colleague while I was like, she's like, you know, what do you do? And then I just told him like, oh, I travel, and then she checked me. I was like, oh my god, you know, like, oh, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, you know. Yeah, true, I'm like, true. On the cover, I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm just regular too, you know. But you I, need to I let like, them know. Yeah, I like having those different. I like having my private life. Separate, and then, yeah. And then Charlene. So yeah. the, then we started talking. She was like, "What do you do?" I was like, "MC." Like, oh, yeah. Mm. What is that? I was like, "Yeah, mm. you do, you do like, like, oh, I've never heard of that before." I was like, "Yeah, yeah." Uh, it's um, I listen to a lot of Afrobeat. I host a lot of shows. When Afrobeat, what is that? Mm. I was like, oh, mm. oh. I was like, <laughs> Lord of mercy. <laughs> you know, and, and he pained me, and he pained me. Yeah. <laughs> go to your phone right now. Go on Spotify. Yeah, to you've got a lot to learn. You got a lot to learn. Like, That's what I'm saying. You basically need to spoon feed it to to certain people, you know, because um. Yeah, it's just like they're scared of 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 change or they're scared of differences. I don't I don't know. I like yeah. to look at it like uh, I'll rather look at the similarities I have with a person than the differences. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So I had to be like Afrobeat, check them out, and they were like, "Oh wow! Oh, I heard this guy. Oh, this guy was nominated for a Grammy." As immediately it relates to America. Mm -hmm. That's where Norwegians like, oh. Yeah. And it's so crazy. I'm like, come on, come on, people. Spread your spread your, your wings. Fly a little, you know. Check out what's Ooh. outside the world. Check out it's not just hip hop and R and B that exist. We have mm. reggae, dance on, Afro beat, you mm. know. Beyonce just did a, 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 a an album representing Afro beat, you know. Yeah. If you know Afro, if you wanna know Afro beat. So all mm. my Norwegian people just go and check Beyonce's latest album, and you you mm. understand Afrobeat is, is good music. So it is. It is. yeah, <laughs> so that's why I just wanted to talk about that a little bit because I just feel like um, in Norwegian, the the Mongol poor inclusivity, the Mongol poor uh, sound, they also. Uh, I don't want to go too deep. Okay, okay. Mm. No, but you you really need to get noticed, you know. Yeah. Uh, in in Norway, you really need to push your way through and and get noticed, and then, like, yeah, this person is different, and you know, has the qualities of uh, can do what, yeah. yeah you just it's really it's push it's I've seen a lot of talented Norwegians. Do you know Miss Tati? Miss Tati. Miss Tati here in Bergen. She's very popular. She does like yeah. this. So, listen, when that woman hits the stage. Mm, she mm, kills it. Mm. But I was like, why is she not bigger? You get true, what I'm saying? And true. What is missing? You know, but you can you can you can see uh 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 this is not this is not a racist thing, you understand? It's mm. not a racist thing, it's just the cultural differences and how people mm. are brought up at the system. You know what I mean? True, but true. somebody could be singing about Rumpa, something, something, you know, mm. and he'll be, and, and he'll be like, he'll be booked on many shows and festivals. Mm. Mm. Somebody with a great voice, perfect background singers, everything is mm. perfect. It's still mm. just there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I really, really hope that uh, uh, um, the Norwegian society, those festivals, those concerts, the, those big people, those CEOs, I hope they can open their eyes and see that. I saw the M, this, let me not change because the, the, <laughs> and there's a lot of people who are talented in this Norway and they're not white. You know what I mean? Very much so. Very much so. Yeah. That's why a big shout out to ELTV, YLTV, who's uh, promoting a lot of the youths coming up and. Um, I like to see that. 
Yeah. Yeah. So big up Wild TV. Yeah, there's a lot of talent. To do. We have Blacko in Oslo. He is so talented. He raps good, writes mm. good songs. So we just have to we, we just have to push. Like me, I don't wait for a handout. I don't wait. Mm. I go get her. So I speak I can see that from far. <laughs> hmm? I can see that from far. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk more about you. Sorry, I was almost like I took the the. It was like you interviewing me now or something. No, so, no, no. It's good. It's good. It's chit chat. <laughs> it's chit chat. So we're having a chit chat. That's what this this is all about. Getting to you know understand each other and know uh you know know what entertainment means. I mean, entertainment is not just about what's regular. You know, it's mm -hmm. also about accepting what is different and unique and and mm -hmm. and and getting to know that that it, it's not just okay if it's from america we accept it mm. you know if it's not yeah. from america we don't accept it it should be we are open to everyone you know? yeah mm -hmm. yeah i mean when it comes to entertainment i think that um as uh, the people who can catch the attention of the crowd or or the masses you know Mm -hmm. That's that's basically the the most important thing. If you can manage to catch the attention of the people and keep them attentive and keep them zoned in on your energy or your vibe or your message or whatever, that's mm -hmm. that's the that's the key to entertainment. You know. Yeah, you get it. You get it. You get it. That's true. You just have to you know find your niche and go for it. Yeah. yeah. So now let's talk. You said you met your wife. When you were in, uh, you know, taking Norwegian course, of course, no? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and you guys are still together. I mean, yeah, we're still together. How many years has that been now? Wow, that's a lot of years. Uh, <laughs> that's a lot of years. It's uh, twenty-two years or something like that, off and on, but uh, yeah, <laughs> twenty-two years or something like that. When you've been with somebody <laughs> so long, it becomes just something like that. <laughs> I get it. That's good. I'm, I'm, now you guys are married, and you guys have how many kids? We got two kids. Great. Two and kids. also, I saw that your your son is doing music now, is he? Yeah, he is. He is. He's actually sitting here. Yeah. Come and say, uh, Auntie, here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna pull him in just to say hi to you. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yo, what's Hello, up? Hello, How are you? I'm good, thank you. And you? I'm great. Look at the flow. I love the flow. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, you <laughs> thank you very much. So what's His, your artist's uh, name? Tell everybody what's your artist's name. Uh, my artist's name is Lil Mo. And I make rap, hip hop, and a little bit of R&B music. Yes. Looking forward to it. <laughs> okay, get out of here. This is my time. <laughs> that is a get out of here. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's really great. I look at he's he's got the fro. That's cool. That's yeah, cool. he had uh, he had long dreadlocks, but he decided to cut them off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So about the dreadlocks, how long yeah. have you had them? Ah, for about twenty years. <laughs> and 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 you still like them? Your your wife hasn't told you to cut it off yet. No, hers are actually a bit longer than mine. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, get yeah. it. I get it. I get it. So, how is it being a family man, traveling, doing big shows? How do you find time for family? Um. Well. Um. Like this year, I've had too much time for family actually because of the COVID. We're, we're getting to that. <laughs> we, we, we're getting tired of each other. No, but um, I have a really good woman. She she really supports me in what I do, and um, and uh, yeah, we've known each other since we were like sixteen years old. So she knows who I am as a person, and I know her well, and she's really supportive. So maximum respect to my wife. You know. Amazing. That's great. That's fantastic. We, I love to hear that. You know. I love to hear that. It's not easy to find women like that these days, you know. No, like, it's not, it's not. and it's not that she doesn't get jealous and things like that because out on the road is crazy. You know? <laughs> <I'm Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, we do have our arguments here and there, but she's she's good still, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's great. So, what's next for you? What's next for you? What's next for me? Um. 
yeah, right now everything's on a standstill. It's, it's kind of messed up. Um, I was supposed to come out with an album in the middle of the year, but uh, that didn't happen because of Corona. So um, we're going to just push it until next year. And uh, yes, just start pushing out music and pushing out music videos. And uh, hopefully we, start, we, we can tour next year. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm hoping. Mm. Yeah, I think that would be great. So you've been in the game for 20 years. Yeah. What would you say has been the steps that, are, that you have taken to get you to still remain in the industry? Um, well, I would say the love for music, basically. But it all started off with sound system, where I was the MC for my sound system, Jack Manifest. Mm -hmm. And then I've, I've had different projects along the way. I, I like to I like to picture something, focus on it, and do it. Yeah. Like if it's an album, I would like to do that. And um, when I managed to get the success that I've had, give thanks for that. Mm -hmm. I've uh, managed to do something in Zambia, which is called the Z-Way Project. Yes. Yeah. Where I've brought um, Zambian artists from Zambia to come and perform here in Norway. And I've also taken Norwegian artists, producers, managers, selectors down to Zambia. So it's kind of like an exchange. We call it Z-Way because in Zambia they say Z and Way. Z-Way. Yeah. Yeah. And Way. Huh? Mm -hmm. So that's something that I would love to, to continue working on and, uh, and bringing in artists to Norway from Zambia. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. I think that's that's a good initiative, and I think it's it's a, it's a nice thing to do. But what would be what would be the advice to be in the game so long? I mean, you gotta have a secret. What would you say is is because it's, it doesn't only take the love for music to stay in the game. We all know no, that. No, no. Uh, what would you say is is what is that key? Um, I would say um. Teamwork is is also very important to have a team around you that um, exactly. that really knows what you want to do and what they want to do and they push push it you know and I'm lucky to have uh, a team that I've known for so many years mm -hmm. um, so they we know each other very well and um, they're good at what they do mm -hmm. and uh, I make sure that I do my job as well mm -hmm. and. Uh, yeah, that's that's basically teamwork is is very important to everybody has a role to play you know yeah. and uh, as long as we play that role then uh, we can do this together yeah because you have a band and you're always traveling with your band and by the way uh one of your backup singers i don't know if she's still your backup Makeda. Yeah, Makeda, yeah. I know Makeda. We grew up together in Stavanga. Yeah. Really? Yeah, wow. I know Makeda. We, we go to hang out, you know, we, when we were all, you know, um, yeah. That's, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. No, Makeda's a, Makeda's a clean heart. Uh, yeah, much love. Yeah, that's great, man. Yeah. Great artist as well. Yeah, she is, she is. So, so it's all about you, you, the key is teamwork. You yeah, the teamwork and yeah, persistency, you know, the, yeah. never give up, never give up on, on if that's really what you want to do, mm -hmm. don't give up on that and uh, yeah, focus on it and, and, and just keep pushing, you know. Mm -hmm. What that's would you what say is your, 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 your favorite thing to do as an artist, apart from doing uh, singing the song, what is your favorite thing that you feel like, oh, I just love being an artist, this, this just gives me... What is it? What is it? Is it the crowd? Is it the, 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 the engineering of the music? What is it that makes you just... I mean, being an artist is very addictive, you know? I, the, the energy that, uh, that you give and get from the crowd is very addictive. It's, it's a feeling that uh, I always long for, you know? I always, yeah. like, this year, we don't need to get there yet, but this year has been, like, fucked up for me. Because yeah. I, I haven't got that... I mean, I've been I've been touring for like 13 years, every yeah. single summer, and this year I haven't got to do it. So it, it really hurts me inside. I haven't got my dose, you know. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. So this pandemic has taken a toll on everyone, and yeah. you've spoken a little bit about how it has affected you. Tell, talk more about it. 
what plan did you have for this year that uh... yeah no i had uh, i had uh, quite a number of festivals lined up that i was supposed to play on and we found out in february march that uh, none of them are going to none of them are going to happen and at the same time in february i lost my mother yeah so like since it's been such a such a mad year for me it's like uh, yeah i won't forget this year <laughs> Yeah, That's I true. know, I know. It's been a crazy year. Thank God that I have my job. I know that I've been mm. taking extra shifts, you know, just pushing it because there's no money coming in from the MC world. So, mm. yeah. Um, well, but, yeah, that's um, one I think we're, we're very lucky to to be in Norway and uh, like for us who have companies and things, we they help us out, you know, mm -hmm. through the pandemic because we can't work. Mm -hmm. And I know there's a lot of artists out there struggling in places where where people can't can't get uh, yeah right. help from the government, you know? know. So yeah, it's really messed up, man. Yeah, I know. Norway is a great country. It's a fantastic mm. country, and they take care of their people. That's amazing. Very safe. Very yeah. safe. But the positive things that thing is that you've had time more time to spend with your family. Oh fuck! No, I'm joking. <laughs> 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 no, I'm joking. Man. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> no, it's all good, man. Yeah, well, we more time with the family, you know. But we're starting to look like each other. We're starting to, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. They're getting too so, used to me. <laughs> you, you have done a lot of music in 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 Norway, and then you took it to Sweden and just blew up there too, you know. Mm. You, you were, I mean, they were playing your song more, songs more in Sweden than even Norway. Your songs were everywhere. The whole Scandinavia. True. True. Yeah. Um, I was, um, I was the first Norwegian artist to be listed on Swedish red, um, yeah. radio since um, Ladder Swing, Ladder Rock and Roll. Yeah. <laughs> That's like an old time oh. song. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. You, do, you, yeah, you that's I why the love. I appreciate the love, you know. No, but that's what I said. That's why I said that you did bring, I mean, mm. reggae dance hall. After me, they just say, you know, people, some people bring everything, you know, you bring fufu, but one person makes the fufu known and tastes better. You get what I'm saying? True, true, you know? true. Yes, yeah, I. Everybody can make fufu, but it will not taste the same. Mm. You know? You yes. <laughs> so. Mm. So um, I think you did a great job spreading uh, reggae dance hall to to Scandinavia. And uh, but have you thought about starting to do concerts outside? Is it the language that is kind of preventing you from, you know, stepping yeah, up? Yeah, basically, because um, when I stopped singing in English, or not stopped, but uh, I started focusing on on the Norwegian language, it mm -hmm. it's well, I suddenly got stuck in the Norwegian language because uh, I got so much, uh, yeah, so much vibes from the people and they love mm -hmm. the things. So I said, no, let me try, let me continue to do this. But I'm, I'm, I won't say that an English album won't come out, come soon. Oh, we might, we does. might even do that next year. I really hope it does. I really hope mm. it does. So listen, uh, we don't want to make this too long because I want the people to have time to ask you questions. But I just wanted to ask you, what is the advice that you will give give to any artist out there that wants to push, that wants to, you know, follow your footsteps a little bit, do some reggae, do some dance, or what advice would you give them? I would tell them, um, yeah, I mean, focus 100% on what you want to do and and go for it, uh, no matter what. Find a, find a serious team that can back you up and you back up the team at the same time. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, just go for your goals. I mean, don't 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 look left, don't look right. Just look straight ahead and and continue until you reach your goals. You know. Yeah, yeah. That's that's it. That's that's all. That's all I always. That's what I always say too. You just have to keep pushing. You have to keep. Yeah, pushing. You, you have to. So about Afrobeat, what Afrobeat artist would you do make a song with? Um, what Afrobeat artist would I make a song with? Because, you know, Burner Boy is out there. Davido Winskin is out yeah. there. You know, we have some Cameroonian talented artists too. Zambians, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Diamond Platinums. Yeah. Woo! 
I mean, I would, I would, I would say I love Burner Boy's style, man. I, yeah. I love the way he, he talks but sings at the same time, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really love that. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna go with Burner Boy. Burner Boy, boy, Burner Boy. Yeah. You, so you have to, you have to make that happen. I mean, I, you know, I think it'd be cool. You know what would be cool? I think it would also be super cool if you could do a song with Diamond Platinums. Because mm. you know the East African vibe, it will it will be crazy. East African flavor, yeah. Yeah. I've been be uh, I've been talking to his management actually, so uh, I wouldn't mm. I would yeah might might just happen in the future, you know. Yeah, I would love that. I think you should keep mm. on doing that. Yeah. So, so, energy, you know, the energy squad. I'm part of them, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that. We love everybody. Everybody is welcome. Everybody is welcome. Everybody That's is what's welcome. Up. Fantastic. Listen, I just want to say thank you for joining us. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Keep doing keep doing the works. Please. Um, we got your back. We support you and uh, keep pushing. We love it, man. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it.